Good, we've got sound. <laughs> Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be back after 18 months of shielding. Uh, we've missed it, and it's really good the Lord's enabled us to come back. Now, both Chris and I are exempt from wearing face masks, so that's why we've got our lanyards on. So please don't feel that we're flouting the regulations. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's just commit the service to the Lord. Father, we just thank you again for the privilege of being together in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that we will know the Holy Spirit guiding and directing every aspect of our service this morning and revealing Jesus to us and that we might go forward in our faith in you. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sorry, Joe, is the microphone. Is it, has it sorted the yes. tape? It has. Oh, I've got to behave then, haven't I? Yes. So Peter said, behave yes. when it's on. So, difficult after 15, 18 months, you just sort of forget what you need to do. Anyway, if you'd like to take your yellow orders of service, please. The Lord be with you. And also with you. If you'd like to take your hymn books, please. We're going to sing number nine, When Morning Gilds the Skies, but omitting verses two and three. Omitting verses two and three, which are the star verses. like to sit or kneel, please. 
Let's just take a few moments while we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us any ways in which we've let Christ down. Not doing what he's asked us to do or doing things we know we shouldn't do. And for which we need to say sorry and ask for forgiveness. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you like to look at your notice sheet for today, about halfway down is today's collect. So we say together, God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase our grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'd like to sit for our first reading, please. A reading from Paul's letters to the Ephesians, chapter 6, starting at the 10th verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 
put on the full armour of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the blessed plate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, for the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, the one of the twelve, was going to betray him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Chris will now. Please sit. Please be come. Let's pray. Lord, open our ears to hear you and our hearts to obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First of all, I'd like to say how wonderful it is for me and Eddie to be back here. It's 18 months since we've actually been here into a church for a service and we've really missed it and you uh, so we're, we're very glad to be back i can't tell you how much chris <clears throat> chris yes have you switched on oh no i'm sorry i haven't switched on <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking about doing it all the time and then when i got up i sorry <laughs> okay can you hear me now yes, yes. right I was just saying it is absolutely wonderful to be back. It's 18 months uh, since we've been here uh, because 
the first bit of the before the pandemic, we were out at various other churches that had got um, interregnums. In one of them, it was pouring with rain, and I was rained on in the pulpit. <laughs> and <laughs> I said, Does it usually rain on the pulpit? And they still depends which direction the wind's in. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we think we've got problems. <clears throat> anyway, let's pray. I'll pray again. Right. Lord, open our ears to hear you and our hearts to obey you, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, our first reading this morning came from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which, like his other letters, would have been copied and circulated to be read aloud amongst other groups of believers, new believers in Asia Minor. And today's passage is the final section of that letter. It's often headed to the armour of God. Now, armour has just one purpose, protection. We've been very focused on protection of one kind and another over the last 18 months, haven't we? From washing our hands more frequently and more thoroughly, to wearing masks in shops, hospitals and public transport, and staying at home. We've done a lot of that. We've got used to the term PPE, for personal protective equipment, worn by NHS staff. Uh, armour of any kind is designed to protect. <coughs> and here in this passage, Paul urges his hearers and us to use the personal protective equipment that God has provided for us as we try to live in a way that honours him. Now unfortunately, this passage has been misused as justification for some awful wars. The medieval crusades and later church-sanctioned attacks on Muslims in Spain, for example, set a disastrous precedent for holy wars. There's no such thing as a holy war. None of which had anything to do with what Paul says here. We're not meant to take Paul's instructions literally. Paul urges us to stand firm in the battle, yes, but it's against evil. Earlier in the letter, Paul's reminded his hearers and readers that Christ's death has cosmic significance. Everything in the universe is subject to Jesus. And now he reminds us that the battle we fight is against the forces of evil at work in the world and against the devil himself. Now, believing in the devil in the 21st century is often regarded as a bit odd, a bit medieval. But look at it this way. As Christians, we believe in a God who made himself known in the person of Jesus. We believe in angels as God's messengers and agents. Where do we get those beliefs? From the Bible chiefly, but also from church teaching. So it's illogical at best to say, I believe in God and angels, but not in the devil and evil spirits. The problem is that the word devil so often conjures up an image of some kind of comic pantomime figure in a red costume with a tail and a pitchfork. And of course the devil we read about in the Bible is much more subtle and clever than that. C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Narnia books amongst other things, and came to faith later in life, remarked that getting people not to believe in the devil was actually the devil's masterstroke. And that's so true. The devil is not a pantomime figure. Other parts of the New Testament tell us that the whole world is in his grip. And as Paul himself says here, our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, human beings, but against the rulers, the cosmic powers of this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Through the cross, Christ conquered evil. When he returns to earth in glory, the forces of evil will be totally destroyed once and for all. But we live in the time between Christ's first coming and his second coming, so we are currently subject to the fallout when those evil forces manifest themselves. Why is there still so much injustice and inequality in the world? Why can we send men to the moon but not solve third world problems? Why are major corporations still relentlessly destroying rainforests? 
Why are we determined to keep weapons of mass destruction? Every day it seems to bring news of another natural disaster or terrible war. Just last week we had Haiti and Afghanistan. Why? Obviously part of the answer is human greed. Some of these issues had historical roots. But the other part, I believe, is that there are invisible forces at work, tapping into human greed and weakness. And these forces can and do interfere in and influence things which could be used for human betterment, distorting them so that they become even and threatening. And just one example, of course, is the internet and social media. I tremble for my adolescent grandchildren, wondering what they're accessing on their phones. But we don't need to live in fear of the 21st century equivalent of reds under the beds, because God has made provision for our protection. Paul says, be strong in the Lord, put on the whole armour of God to stand against the ones of the devil. Stand firm. Fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take the shield of faith to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, apart from the sword, all those items mentioned are protective, not aggressive. They're for defense, not attack. And the instructions Paul gives are about standing firm or holding the line. Paul reminds us that being a Christian isn't just pie in the sky when we die. It's about standing firm against evil, about holding the line. Now, one person isn't a line. All the instructions Paul gives here are plural in the Greek. They're addressed to a community of believers, not to individuals. I got quite excited when I realised this, because I think one of the things the pandemic has highlighted for all of us is how much we need each other and how important it is to be part of a community. And until Eddie and I were shielding during lockdown, I hadn't realised how many people I normally speak to just doing ordinary things during the week. And then in some weeks during lockdown, I literally spoke to nobody but Eddie. I can't use the phone, so I couldn't even phone my family. We need each other. I know our church leaders and councils have been wondering what should stay the same and what might change about the way we worship and the way we present ourselves as a Christian community here in our town and neighbourhood. I believe the last section of this morning's reading gives us part of the answer to that. Paul says, pray in the spirit at all times, persevere in supplication for all believers, pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the mystery of the gospel. And that last request of Paul, that his converts will pray for him, is a mark of his humility. Here he was, a great leader in the early church, but he knew he needed prayer as much as any of us do, and he wasn't too proud to ask for it. It's also quite poignant to realise that Paul wrote this letter and others from Rome, where he was under house arrest, chained day and night to a Roman soldier. So it's no wonder he describes the armour he mentioned so clearly. He'd had plenty of opportunities to study it at close quarters, as he waited for his trial before the Roman Emperor. We don't know the end of Paul's story, but it's widely believed that he was executed, an early Christian martyr. Paul knew from experience and from hearing from God that prayer is the Christian's most effective weapon in the battle against evil. We may need other things too, but prayer is the essential one, and yet sometimes it seems to be the most neglected. It, it can become a last resort. Well, we've tried everything else and nothing's worked. Perhaps we should pray. You know what? Actually, it should be the other round, or the other way around. We should be praying first and then trying the other things. We need to pray for ourselves in big things and small things. I'm always amazed at God's attention to detail. So pray about the small things as well as about the big things. We need to pray for our neighbours, 
our church, our parish, our community, our country, our world. But how do we pray? Rather than theorising here, I'm just going to share some of my own experiences. I hope you'll forgive that, because obviously that's what I know best. I think discovering how to pray is a never-ending journey. None of us can ever say, that's it, I've cracked praying, I wish. And one of the most helpful things I've heard is pray as you can, not as you can't. We're all different, we pray differently, and that's fine. Now, if you read biographies of famous Christians, especially men, Martin Luther, John Wesley, Billy Graham, say, you often read that they spent hours in prayer which can make no famous Christians like me feel inadequate and a little daunted. But these heroes of the faith, and, you know, they are undoubtedly that, almost certainly didn't have to be at the office by 8am, take the children to school or swimming or whatever, do the shopping or the washing or the ironing or the cooking. They had servants or wives or machines or all three to do that. So, pray as you can, not as you can't. But the great thing is that everyone can pray. You don't need to be young or fit and agile, because that would immediately rule out a lot of us, me included. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need to be in a particular place. You can pray anywhere, in any language, at any time. You don't have to use special words or set prayers, though some people find them helpful. Just talk to God, or use one of the Psalms, many of which are prayers. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, and he did and he'll teach us too, if we ask him. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we all started praying that people would want to come to church and they started coming? And so there are many different ways to pray and it can take a while to find one or more than one that suits you. A lot of my prayers are arrow prayers, short requests. If someone comes to mind and I don't know why, they think, oh, maybe they need a prayer. And you can pray that kind of prayer while doing the housework or gardening, perhaps on a walk or halfway around Sainsbury's. Now, I have a grasp of the mind. My thoughts constantly lead from one thing to another and I can't switch off easily. It makes getting to sleep quite difficult. So my best way of praying is out loud, because that keeps me focused, but it's obviously not something you can do on the bus or when your husband's trying to get to sleep. But if I'm somewhere alone and no one can hear me, I often pray out loud, just to keep myself focused. Now recently I found that sitting in a comfortable chair in the dark also helps me to pray, as there's less to distract me. Though I don't understand why this should be, because I've got my eyes shut anyway, but that, that is working for me. I also find it helpful to keep a list of people and situations that need prayer. Some I know personally, some I've only heard about. And I also keep a record of answers to prayer, because that is a huge faith booster. If you look back and see that two years ago you prayed for so and so and so and so, and then you remember, oh yes, and then, and then that was answered, um, it, does, it does give you a boost. Over the course of my adult life, I had a number of prayer partners. I find that praying with one or two other people whom you trust is also a great encouragement to faith and to sticking to prayer, at prayer. Uh, during lockdown, Eddie and I have become praying daily at meal times for our immediate family. Because we had more time and often there wasn't anything we had to go to or get to in the afternoon. Um, our daughters, grandchildren and sons-in-law would extend it to the wider family we, we would never get up from lunch. <laughs> uh, we usually have a cold lunch, so I generally say grace at lunchtime and that has sort of expanded into detailed requests and concerns about the family, which we bring to God, asking for his help for those individuals and situations. But our evening meal is generally a hot one because Eddie is a meat and two veg man, even in a heat wave. So he says grace is a and just briefly reminds God of the detailed family needs that I've mentioned at lunchtime. And you know, that's one way in which our own praying together has developed during the pandemic. So, um, now I've finished. So summarise, our reading this morning, Paul reminds his converts and us that all Christians are involved in a battle between the spiritual forces of good and evil. In Christ, we have all the personal protective equipment we need for that fight. But the most effective weapon we possess is prayer. So, let's pray. 
Father, we thank you that we have the scriptures and that you've promised to hear us when we pray. Give us an increased desire to pray and show us how. Help us too to recognise your answers to our prayers. In Jesus' name, If you'd like to take your hymn books now, please. We're going to sing our second hymn, number 780, 780, Soldiers of Christ Arise. Please stand. remain standing please. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last year. Amen. Would you like to sit or kneel, please, for our intercession? As I pray, I'd just like to mention that one way in which I have found prayer to be open to me was when I 
I'd been thinking of God as a powerful tyrant almost, you know, really holy and everything. Then I realised the Bible actually was revealing to me that he is my daddy. He loves me. And so I'm able to come to him as a child comes to their parent with a belief. I mean, a young child believes God will answer. So let's bring before the Lord our intercessions now. Lord, we do thank you for your creation. Lord, as we look, as Chris mentioned, at what has been going on, we are just shaken at times. The heartbreak of Haiti, <coughs> the chaos of Afghanistan, the floods in India, the fires in Greece. Lord, from one point of view, we don't know how to pray about these things. But Lord, we thank you. We come to a loving Heavenly Father who has the answers and is in control of this universe. So Lord, we do pray for the people of Haiti, that the support they need will get to them quickly. We pray, Lord, for the people of Afghanistan. Lord, my heart's felt prayer is that the Taliban will be better this time and not so ruthless. And that, Lord, the people of Afghanistan will just know a much greater degree of peace and freedom than they have known in the past. And Lord, for the floods and the fires, Lord, again, we just pray that your hand will come upon these situations, that rain will come to those areas where there are fires and put them out and the rains will cease where there are floods. Lord, even though we see so much suffering, your word says that you are a God of love and you care for your creation, you care for your people. And we just pray, Lord, that those who are suffering at the moment for whatever reason, will be aware of you working to sort the issues out and support them. And Lord, as we think of your wider creation, we're mindful, Lord, that there's shortly to be an international conference in Glasgow. And we pray, Lord, that even now, in the run-up to it, the various nations of the world will begin to get their heads round how to make a difference. And yet, Lord, we also know that some of those problems with creation have been caused by us, using so much plastic and other ways. We just pray, Lord, that you will help us to know what we as individuals can do to make a difference. So Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. And Chris has also talked about how in lockdown we've realised how much we need each other. And Lord, we just pray for the members of our congregation who need our prayers. We pray for Marianne Giles, Bernard Broadhead, Pat Walker, Thelma Dean, Reg Creasy, Edith Hobson, and the Reverend Paul Mellis. 
And Lord, we just remember also now Gillian Kellogg, following the death of Martin yesterday morning. Lord, just help Gillian and the immediate family to know your support and your comfort. And we pray for the other families, Lord, in the notice sheet who are facing funerals, particularly the families of Angela Wilson, Brenda Edwards, Mary Leavers, Robert Woofenden, Jeff Grattan, Barbara Horry. May each of those families, Lord, know your comfort and your peace as they prepare for the funerals. Lord, in your mercy, hear me. And Lord, we do pray for all of our community here. Thank you, Lord, that we can meet as community. But Lord, so we're also aware, Lord, that we're part of a wider community, the community out in Dromfield. And Lord, we know that you have placed us here to be salt and light to those around us. We just pray, Lord, that you will just enable us, as a body of Christ, to find the ways in which we can reach out to the people in the wider community. And Lord, as activities begin to start up again, where the community and church meet, that Lord, you will give us wisdom in how to make those profitable interfaces. And that, Lord, through our lives here, people might be attracted to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear me. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. You should all hopefully have a notice sheet. As I said, there is one change in that on it you're asked to pray for Martin Kellogg. But as I said, he passed away yesterday. So please remember Gillian and the family in your prayers. Phil, is there a card reader for intercession, for donations. Yes, uh, Phil? Phil's got them. You, anybody Phil. who wants to, to make a donation? So where will you be standing, Jill? At the end. Phil, you've got the card, haven't you? Card reader. If anybody wants to make a donation at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where will you be standing at the end? Okay. So, if any of you want to make a donation by card, then Jill has the means for you to do it after the service. Sorry, okay? Could you, just, could you just repeat what it's about? Sorry? Could you just repeat what it's about, please? Yes. Uh, collections. <coughs> Phil has got a means of giving donations to the church using a credit card oh, yes. or debit card. Yeah. 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 So after the service, she will be at the back for anybody who wants to make use of that. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, one thing that is important to remember is the government lifted a lot of regulations on Monday. The decision has been taken by the Church Council that as far as we are concerned, we will still socially distance. So we will not have a normal peace 
we will have a socially distanced peace. And when communion is being distributed, we still will not be giving the wine out to the congregation. Okay? So, hopefully, come September time, we might be thinking again and easing things a bit further. But at the moment, the council felt we should be cautious. Okay. So, with that in mind, would you like to stand for the piece, please? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up for our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So peace to everybody. Sorry about that was interview with Chris. Because she's seeing my back, she's not been able to lip read. So what I've just done, what I've just done at living, Chris has not been able to follow. So she hasn't picked up that I've said social distancing is continuing. We're not distributing wine and the peace is done with social distancing. I should have thought of it. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to take your hymn books again now, please. We're going to sing number 631, Fight the Good Fight. Would you like to sit or kneel, please? The Lord is here. Is Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. 
In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is thy body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, though we are many. We are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. 
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table. As you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners, so cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Come, not because you must, but because the Lord Jesus Christ invites you to eat at his table.
Let us pray the post communion collect. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit loves give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we, holy children, shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our final hymn is number 826. 826. Ye holy angels bright. Do you like this step? So as you've probably guessed, there's no refreshments after the service this morning. Hopefully, maybe in the September? Who knows? It'd be nice to have it again and yes. be able to have fellowship together. Yes. So all that remains to be said now is the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.